Hey guys, it's Ray here and welcome back to another Clash Royale video. Today, we've got Aaron back on the channel and if you guys remember from last time, he is literally one of the best motorcycle players in this entire game, hands down. And just last season, he switched to the 2.6 Mortar Earthquake Cycle Deck variation and he managed to push all the way up to 7,700 trophies, which at one point is actually top 100 in the entire world. And he's got some really insane, really 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 close replays to show you guys this time but before we get into some matches please go ahead and check Aaron out on his Twitter as well as YouTube I'll link both of them down in the description he posts some amazing mortar gameplays on his channel as well so feel free to go there and check that out anyways with all that out of the way let's get right into the matches Alrighty, so this first match here, um, he's going to be against Hugo CR and uh, this guy is going to be using Royal Giant Ghosts and this is Obviously a very difficult matchup for Mortar because I mean there's just so many tanks and the Royal Giants obviously just a really difficult matchup for most siege players. So anyways here Starting off, he's going to always get himself a King Tower activation. Anytime you get a chance, you're pretty much going to want a King activation. Obviously against this specific matchup since it is Royal Giant, it's not going to matter too much. But you can see, um, it still does help slightly later into this match. So anyway, starting off, of course, he's going to go in with a Mortar. Aaron is quite aggressive with his Mortar play. Uh, but unfortunately, a quick Royal Giant, Royal Ghost, 9 Elixir at the bridge completely takes that stuff out. And um, yeah, you can see even this is going to be a bit of a tough defense here. And uh, Aaron's going to have to spend another Mortar just to go ahead and take that Royal Giant out. Unfortunately, Mortar does not even get a single hit onto the tower, so... Yeah, that's just a little bit unfortunate right there. Um, but it does that knight force out a quick three elixir fisherman uh, in response. So I guess everything is not too terrible, um, all things considered. And yeah, he's just going to go into some spear goblins to mitigate as much damage as possible. Um, it's obviously just a, a timing issue there. And uh, one Spear Goblin is going to go ahead and get one chip shot onto the tower. And with this Mortar deck specifically, um, you're going to want to take any damage you can. Because it's uh, mostly going to be a Spell Cycle deck. Here the opponent goes ahead and Fireballs onto the Mortar. Mortar does get one hit, but the Royal Giant's going to take his tower down to 2700 HP. So not exactly the start that he wanted here. Um, and as we head towards a uh, double elixir, this is when things really start getting uh, a little bit sketchy. So there are like, I think there are three things that I noticed from this matchup uh, that you should pay attention to. The first is you always want to save your knight for the royal ghost. Um, because this deck really doesn't have any other counter to that royal ghost, you almost always want to make sure you have that knight in cycle uh, in order to uh, ensure that you don't have to spend a ton of elixir destroying the ghost. Uh, the next thing is you want to utilize the fireball bait element in this deck. Surprisingly, there is a bit of a fireball bait element. Uh, but anyways, looking back at this push here, it is a little bit tough, but the Royal Giant does get no hits onto the tower. Oh, one hit. Mm, I was wrong. Anyways, uh, you can see later in this match, he'll utilize fireball bait in order to bait out, uh, in order to make sure the firecracker can get as much value as possible. So here you can see the opponent fireballs onto the mortar, and the firecracker is free to counter that Royal Giant for zero hits. And you'll see he does that over and over again in pretty much every single one of his royal giant defenses he'll mortar in the fireball position bait out that fireball and then the firecracker is just free to get so much value and in the other lane you can see aaron is just starting that spell cycle game as early as possible because um you know in terms of just spell power aaron is obviously going to win the spell race so if he can pretty much counter the royal giant and take zero hits at all he's actually going to be able to win this match and you can see here once again, he's just cycling his earthquakes, and since the opponent's fireballs are out of cycle, then the fi uh, then the uh, firecracker is able to just get so much value over and over again. And uh, another thing is that Aaron is very very good at min maxing. So what what that basically means is that he's able to you know take damage to even out damage between both towers very very effectively. Uh, so anyways, here he's got a big push coming in this way. Mortar on defense, followed up by a knight, is going to take out that fisherman first. And a log as well, followed up by, I believe, a tornado is going to limit that royal giant to actually, I think, just zero hits onto the tower. And uh, now heading into the last minute of overtime here, uh, Aaron just tries to get another royal, uh, tries to get another mortar lock onto the tower, but 
Of course, the Royal Giant's gonna be in cycle for that. And uh, now we've got a little bit of a double lane push coming in this way. Aaron's gonna go ahead and uh, let's see here. He's gonna knight to tank for all this stuff. And again, as I said, min-maxing. He's gonna take two hits from the Royal Giant, actually three hits from the Royal Giant in the right lane. And that's gonna actually, you know, almost perfectly even out damage between the two towers, which is totally fine. And uh, yeah, with 30 seconds left here, things are not looking too good, right? So 27 seconds, he's going to go in with a mortar here to tank for all this stuff. Earthquake down once again to get more damage onto the tower. 21 seconds, and uh, again, he takes another Royal Giant hit right there, but 16 seconds. And uh, yeah, it's time to spell cycle as fast as possible. So as you can see, NATO, NATO on tower, Log on tower, 8 seconds left. And he's just cycling his spells as quickly as he can. He gets in one final tornado and he manages to pull out the win by just 2 HP. So absolutely insane victory right there. It's a very, very difficult matchup. But as you can see, by using some smart defense, followed up by insane spell cycling at the end, he was able to just barely pull out that overtime victory. All right, next up, we're going to be against a graveyard matchup. Now, graveyard is always a very difficult matchup for Mortar. Considering how weak our uh, graveyard counters are, they're able to often very easily deal with them and get tons of damage with their graveyard. So start off here the opponent is going to go in with a bowler here in the back unfortunately Aaron did not have a mortar in the starting hand and here the opponent is just going to go straight in with a graveyard on offense and you can see here earthquake's actually quite an underrated uh counter to the graveyard uh, a quick earthquake and log that's a five for five trade and uh yeah that graveyard pretty much got countered and dealt almost no damage whatsoever onto that tower so Pretty good first defense right there. And uh, yeah, as you can see, gonna go in with some spear goblins at the bridge just to go ahead and get as much chip damage as possible. So as you can see here, just knight down will mirror that Valkyrie probably. And uh, let's see here. Uh, the, obviously the goal here against any graveyard deck is you wanna get a king tower activation. So unfortunately you can't activate with the Valkyrie. You can't really activate with an Inferno Dragon. But the one card, in, oh, well, there are two cards that you can activate King Tower uh, with against. But there are two cards that you can actually activate King Tower with uh, in the opponent's deck, and that is the Bowler and the Baby Dragon. So you can see here the opponent plays that Bowler down. So Aaron's gonna obviously want to get that King Tower activation. So Graveyard's coming in. Knight and Tornado is gonna go ahead and get himself that King Tower activation right there. Uh, and then a log down we'll just go ahead and finish off all of those skeletons so now aaron is in a bit of a damage deficit but he has a king tower activation against graveyard so personally if i were in his position i would still be very very happy with how that interaction went so heading towards double elixir time uh aaron's gonna start uh getting a little bit more aggressive and quick with his pushes as you can see a mortar immediately into that opposite lane forces out an inferno dragon as well as a valkyrie right there Firecracker down begins to damage out that, uh, that Inferno Dragon. And you can see here, he's going to do a very good job at making sure that the opponent pretty much has to counter the Firecracker. Uh, because he does a very good job at uh, protecting it. So the opponent almost always has to spend like a NATO or something just to make sure that, that Firecracker doesn't get like insane value on pretty much all of the defenses. Anyways here, Mortar once again here in the opposite lane, and the opponent actually freezes here uh, in order to, uh, you know, make sure that Mortar doesn't get damaged. But you can see here the Mortar, I think, is still going to get another hit. No, actually, never mind. Uh, 15 seconds left, Skeleton's down to distract the Inferno Dragon. Knight makes sure that the Graveyard has zero tank, and... Um yeah, Log there is going to pretty much finish the job like so. Unfortunately, again, the Bowler is just such a big counter to the Mortar. That Bowler down pretty much is going to absolutely shut down that Mortar. There's no point in even trying to defend it. And so, yeah, once again, the Firecracker down is going to get a ton of value, taking out the Bowler. And now Aaron is going to already begin the spell cycle route. So, Predictive NATO gets the Mortar one hit onto the tower, forces out a freeze to deal with all of this stuff right there. And uh, yeah, now Aaron just has to focus on defending this incoming push. Bit of a double lane pressure going on here. So, a Firecracker down, followed up by a Knight to Tank, is going to do a very, very good job. Mortar, and then I think another Predictive NATO actually, oh, never mind. Mortar, and then just a quick Earth 
earthquake log is going to take out the ice wizard and uh, the mortar is actually going to also splash onto the tower for an additional hit so things are actually looking pretty good going into the last minute triple elixir of this match boulder is going to take this out and there's a big graveyard push coming in but again knight is going to body block at the bridge and then spear goblins are going to do a great job until they get needed away of course uh, last minute of this match and uh, the Inferno Dragon gets dangerously close to the tower But uh, luckily here the tower and the firecrackers are able to damage that down Meanwhile here that mortar actually gets a lock onto the tower and uh, it's gonna take that damn tower down to 866 HP and at this point it's pretty much almost spell cycle range So uh, let's see here I think Aaron's gonna focus on defending this push and you can see two firecrackers down and that NATO gets so much value at just taking out all of that stuff firecrackers Cracker NATO is actually quite an underrated combination, and uh, at this point, Aaron can just spell cycle. Um, so 23 seconds, log down, uh, spear goblins down, earthquake down onto the tower, I think, and that's actually going to be good enough to finish all of this stuff off. So you can see. Graveyard can be a very, very difficult matchup, but by getting a King Tower activation and then utilizing that Firecracker to its maximum value, you're able to pretty consistently get the win in this matchup. Alrighty, so this next match against Elixir Golem Barb Hut, which this specific variation of motorcycle, it's very, very difficult because the only air counters we have can be very, very easily taken out by NATOs or like the baby dragons and all that stuff. In addition, we don't exactly have a big spell uh, unlike classic motorcycle, so we can't just like rocket out the baby dragons and stuff if the opponent starts stacking up an absolutely massive push. Uh, so anyways, here starting off, of course, Barb Hut down is going to take out the mortar, but the earthquake is going to uh, nullify that Barb Hut pretty easily. Meanwhile, Spear Goblin is down, going to require a much bigger response from the opponent, and uh, Battle Healer is going to actually come down just to deal with this tiny push right there. And you'll notice that this is actually something that you're going to want to do quite often with this deck, is to make tiny pushes that just force out, they'll either get like a little bit of chip damage or they'll force out a response uh, from the opponent. Anyways here, Firecracker down and Mortar once again, but the Barb Hut is back in cycle. And uh, Aaron's just gonna go ahead. Well, I mean, there's no way that the, uh, there's no way that the Mortar's breaking through. Just go in with an Earthquake, take down that Barb Hut so that the opponent can't build up that passive pressure. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, the opponent can't exactly build up that Barb Hut presence on the arena. Mortar might even get a hit onto the tower, followed up by those Spear Goblins, which is going to give him a significant lead. But the opponent has a massive push, and you can see how difficult this Elixir Golem push is going to be to defend. What does he have to take those stuff out? The NATO just absolutely obliterates the Firecracker, and Aaron has zero air counters aside from that, uh, aside from those Spear Goblins. So. Yeah, as you can see, Aaron's going to take the King Tower activation, but there's a massive double dragon push with a heal spirit there. Log does not uh, actually catch that heal spirit there. And look at that, two dragons down. And uh, look at this, the Electro Dragon is going to take his tower down to, I think, 690 hit points. So this is obviously a very, very bad start heading into uh, Double Elixir time. Uh, but the good thing though is that the elixir golem deck actually doesn't have a big spell So if you're able to uh, very very perfectly defend all of his pushes Then you're going to be able to sneak away with a win which um, I mean is probably what he does here, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't be sharing this replay. So 24 seconds left. He gets another mortar down uh, that followed by a log is going to do a great job taking care of the barbs and uh, now once again 15 seconds left He's gonna go in with a defensive mortar here uh, To you know take down all of this good stuff right here He's gonna go in uh, as you can see with a log that'll clear out the blobs and then a knife down will do a good job at uh you know, distracting the little dragons, but there's still a gigantic push coming in and uh, as you can see logs and get a ton of value right there Mortar, I think, doesn't even get a hit onto the tower, which is just unfortunate. NATO will pull everything into the opposite lane, and uh, that is actually a play that pretty much saves the game here. However, I mean, his push isn't over. The opponent's still going to spam uh, an Elixir Golem right at the bridge. Mortar down is going to apply some opposite lane pressure as well. 
And uh, yeah, one minute and 30 left in this match. Two firecrackers down. And as you can see, that combined with the NATO is going to get so much value. Unfortunately, you know, the firecrackers do die to the E Dragon. But uh, as you can see, the opponent gets another Barb Hut down. But Aaron is ready with the Earthquake. Mortar followed by Earthquake. I think followed by Log as well is going to take down that bar pod get the mortar i think one hit onto the tower um which is you know quite significant and with a minute left in this match um it's actually getting dangerously close for aaron to be able to spell cycle so here as you can see a predictive nato gives him the mortar lock towers down within spell cycle range and since the opponent doesn't have a big spell that's just gg the opponent cannot take down the tower aaron gets the win against elixir golem and uh wow what a comeback victory right there all right so this last match going to be against a quick minor cycle deck now this minor deck is actually slightly quicker than this mortar earthquake cycle so technically the opponent does have the advantage in the uh in the fact that it has a bit of a quicker cycle in addition, the opponent's deck also has a miner to get ch uh, additional chip damage onto the tower, which just makes the matchup all that much more difficult. However, in terms of how exciting this matchup is, well, it is uh, on the repetitive side, right? Both opponents don't have ways to build up massive pushes, so they're both going to rely really heavily on spell cycling this entire match. So you can see that's exactly what they do here. Aaron does go in with a mortar here, but that just gets very easily distracted by his skeletons, and then Earthquake's going to damage down more than half of its HP. So, at this point, there's really not too much purpose in actually playing mortars on offense, and Aaron's just going to begin uh, spell cycling immediately. <laughs> um, so yeah, Spear Goblins down, distract the opponent's Spear Goblins, and we'll force out a bit of a response log comes out there. And uh, I think Aaron just goes ahead and plays an Earthquake most likely here just to get even more chip damage onto the tower. Again, the opponent cannot build up a big push, so there's really no way for him to actually punish that. And uh, actually, the same goes the other way as well. So anyways here, Miner down, as you can see, very, very smart defense. Night Log Skeletons actually uh, stops any damage from going onto his tower. And as we head a little bit closer towards that double elixir mark here, as you can see, Aaron's actually hovering that firecracker because uh, he, he's thinking if the opponent gives him any like chance to get chip damage with the firecracker, he's going to take it. But uh, unfortunately, the opponent is smart, so uh, he does not let that happen. And Aaron just goes ahead and gets another earthquake down off of the tower. So heading into double extra time, things are looking pretty good because Aaron's obviously has the uh, spell cycle advantage. Knight once again catches the miner. Defensive mortar down is going to get completely obliterated, but you know takes care of the wall breakers push. And then the knight just gets damage down by everything there Aaron just goes ahead cycles another set of earthquakes and um, yeah the ball is pretty much in the opponent's court at this point NATO is gonna clear the spear goblins knight catches the minor mortar down once again will tank for the wall breakers and uh, almost gets a hit but the opponent does get skeletons down so now another set of earthquakes comes down as we head towards the last 30 seconds of this match and um, yeah, as you can see, the opponent's actually starting to slowly catch up just because the miner is able to actually get some sort of chip damage onto the tower. However, you know, here Aaron actually gets a King Tower activation, followed up by another set of earthquakes onto the tower. Mortar, unfortunately, will not get a hit onto the tower. Um, but again, he's just going to focus on trying to consistently catch that miner. So Spear Goblin's down long. He's just barely going to stop that wall breaker from connecting. And then a little minor wall breaker's push once again in the back is going to be starting to get quite difficult for Aaron to actually contend with. And here, uh, the opponent actually is able to almost tie this match up here. And uh, you can see how this matchup can be quite difficult because the cycle cards of the opponent's minor deck is able to also get chip damage onto the tower, while the cycle cards in Aaron's deck are going to have to be focused on defending these pushes. Uh, so as you can see here, the opponent is actually starting to pull away with a slight lead. However, Aaron's just going to continue with the Earthquake cycle because, you know, he trusts, he trusts the process, right? Once again, he does catch that knight. Log's going to finish off this good stuff right there. And uh, at this point, it's just, you know, trying to get your spells out as quickly as possible. Both towers are down super low. And uh, he unfortunately does not... Oh, he does catch the miner. Okay. And then 58 seconds left. His tower's within uh, earthquake range. So the earthquake actually just goes ahead finishes the tower off for another insanely close win right there. So as you can see, there's just so much micro... Uh, 
So as you can see, there's just so much micro required to manage that matchup. Just absolutely insane plays from Aaron. So there we go, a couple of replays that actually pushed Aaron up to 7,700 trophies on ladder last season. Absolutely insane gameplay. Again, huge thanks to him for coming on the channel. Go ahead and check out his YouTube channel down below. But unfortunately, guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. Huge thanks to all of my channel members. You guys are the absolute Gs. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Array, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.